Hi guys, John the Firearms Instructor, and welcome to our live. Good evening, it's Tuesday night. You know where you should be. You should be having your phone, your laptop in your hand, watching this live with you and me. If you're new, you know what to do. You need you need to let me know where you're from. If you are new to the, the, our live, we'd like to hear from you. I'd like to know where you're from, and, uh, and tell us a little bit about yourself in the comments. We'll check those in a little bit. Tonight we got a great show. Uh, we've got a lot of different stuff, and we're going to get right to that as soon as we hear from our sponsor, Aura. Aura is an online defensive practice product that protects you from fraudsters and online protection. It's very economical, very easy, and let's hear what they have to say. Me, you're getting sick of the spam emails and everything else like that. Well, Aura is a company that will protect you from scams, frauds, and online threats. Did you know that one out of four will fall victim to some kind of online crime? Did you know that America lost over $10.3 billion on online crime? Aurora is a company that has an all-in-one protection plan for you. It'll keep your family safe from hackers, fraudsters, and online predators. Each plan comes with a million-dollar identity theft insurance. With a single couple or family plan, they have one that'll fit your needs. Take advantage of the family plan because it'll protect up to five adults and it includes children. Uh, if you'd like to, Aura gave us a special deal that we're allowing you to take a 14-day free trial by clicking the link above. Protect yourself with Aura. All right, welcome back, guys. Yeah, you know what's neat about them? They gave me a free membership when I took on the sponsorship, telling me that uh, they would change my uh, security on my phone and stuff like that. Well, last week. I got a message from them, said that they found a few of my passwords and a couple of my um, uh, software programs were having some spyware or spalware, and they removed all that stuff. And they found me on a bunch of lists of stuff that uh, these data brokers that sell our information on a regular basis. And there are a lot of those database uh, uh, people you don't even think would be uh, sell your information, and they got me off a bunch of those lists, so we get rid of those phone calls. So you get an opportunity. Uh, check the link below. Check it out. Uh, they're going to give you that 14-day free trial. I'll tell you what, I got a bunch of stuff right before the 14-day trial, so I went ahead and gave my credit card, uh, and it's costing me, Heidi, the two boys, and my girl, my, my, my son's girlfriend, the five of us, and we're protecting all of our software for less than 50 bucks a month. So it's well worth it. I would highly recommend you look at it. Check the link below and go ahead and sign up for it. If you don't like it after 14 days, you can dump right out of it, guys. You don't need to do it if you don't need it. But I can tell you what, what they've done for me is dramatic. And I'm very impressed with them. All right. So tonight we have a lot of different stuff. We've got, a, we got 10 people on right now. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, I have a special offer for you guys. I told you last week about our ebook we just launched, and that ebook itself has been giving us a lot of information about the first ebook is why you shoot low and left, and we are selling it through Amazon and we're selling it through our Shopify store, and we are going to give you a super deep discount. We're going to give you $5 off on that book. It's $9.99. You're going to get it for $4.99 for being our loyal every Tuesday night group. And we're going to give you that discount. That discount code is, let's see what I can find it here. That discount code is LIVE2024. LIVE2024. And if you put that in at checkout, you're going to get five dollars off which means that book's only going to cost you four dollars and 99 cents and we have sold a bunch of those this week which i'm pretty happy about um it is a fully educational book what we did was we took the information and we used it as well as it, it dives into why it's common to shoot low and left 
and then uh, it explains how to correct it. It explains a lot of different stuff. In the link below, there'll be a, a link to our our shop store that you can go to and purchase this book. Put shop, put uh, live 2024 at the checkout, and you get it for $4.99. And we've got more of these coming. We're, we're calling this the Master Aim Series. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the book itself, and we're going to make a, a playlist of the videos we've done on YouTube to match up with this book. So you're going to get the book. You're going to be able to read the book. You're going to, the book has pictures in it, as well as you're going to get the backup of the YouTube videos. And all I'm asking you to do is if you read the book and you like it, do a review for us. That would help us out tremendously. Those reviews will support us as we keep doing these books. I think it's a natural thing for me to do now because uh, we are going to do, we have the every every Tuesday night live, we have our podcast. We're going to do these books. And then we're going to do an audio book as well. So someone who doesn't want to read it, they can hear it as well. So and they'll put those on our podcast as well. When I got all that free time that I'm doing all this stuff, all, you know, <laughs> we had we had a big busy, busy week last week. We had all the way that we had a gun show of the weekend, which was Friday and Saturday and Sunday. Then we start back here Monday, and then this week we have another gun show. We have two gun shows back to back, but you know it's a passion of mine. I love it, get to meet neat people and know people, so it's kind of an awesome thing. So this live we're going to do tonight is all about proper grip and i have done a grip one before i know you guys are going to say john you're doing the same thing over again but these things are so important that some people don't hear it the very first time but this is not proper grip this is grip mistakes you might be making and these are very common i wish i had a camera with me all the time to take a look at some of these grips that we're seeing out here in the range on a Friday or Saturday when we have open range time for people. Uh, they are, ter you know, terrible, terrible grips. And the guys are coming up here telling me the gun's wrong. Something's wrong with the gun. The gun's shooting low and left. And then I go up back there and I shoot just fine with it. And then they try to explain to me that the sight's off or something's off. You know what's the funny thing is, and a lot of people don't know this, and the next ebook we're doing right now, I'm working on it, is get a grip. It's going to talk about all the grip, why it's important to have a good grip, what is the right grip, and there's a lot of these. So see, these master series books we're doing is going to be the fundamentals. It's going to be the master series, why you shoot low and left, master series on you know how to how to have a proper grip and then we're going to do a proper trigger and we're going to do the sight picture and sight alignment and this all these little books are tying into one big book that will produce sooner or later which will be in a hardback form or a softback form and we're going to do each individual book and we're going to call that book the secrets the of a firearms instructor and it's going to give you every all my knowledge in one big book. So that's going to be exciting. That's down the road a little bit. So we're going to let each one of these marinate a little bit. This first ebook we put out a couple weeks ago. Well, actually, last Tuesday was the first time. And that ebook is out. It's in Amazon. We have an Amazon store. If you can't get there, you can go to our Amazon. If you buy it at Amazon, you're not going to get the discount because they charge me a lot more to put it on Amazon. But but if you do the Shopify one that's going to be in the link, you're going to get that $5 off. And what was that? What was that uh, discount code? Live 2024. Live 2024. We'll get you $5 off that $9.99. And it's instant. So when you go to pay for it, you get it, and you can begin reading it right away, guys. And uh, no, I didn't do it all myself. I got a, I had a special help with Jacob and Heidi, Miss Heidi. She she. She uh, he reads it and looks it over, checks all the commas and the and the and the uh, you know punctuations and everything else like that. So without baby girl and and my family, none of this shit would be possible. 
uh, because I'm stretched thin anyways. And of course, you know, the computer can only do so much and I need to, you know, pr proofreading for me is good, but I need someone else to proofread it as well. And that's what Miss Johnson does for me. Let's try to get this live tonight up to 20, 20 to 25 people. We're at 14 right now, which is very exciting for me. 14 as we sit right now. So tonight we're going to talk about 10 pistol grips you might be making. Pistol grip mistakes. Whether you're a beginner or experienced shooter, it's important to assure that you are using correct grip to maximize accuracy and control. I am going to go full screen, take my beautiful picture off here. And then I'm going to hit it. Oh, I, I thought I went full screen. Oh, you know what I need to do? I need to push the little button over here. There we go. Full screen. All right. I'm going to take that. I'm going to go back out to get that one thing off there. Banner wise. Let's see if I can get 2024 off there. Close that down. Boom. There we go. Let's go back to full screen. Boom, boom. All right. All right, guys. So here's a little, uh, I go ahead, went ahead and put in the cover of the new book. Cover of the new book is Master Your Aim, Why You Shoot Low and Left. You know what? I got an email today or I got a comment today from somebody who said, hey, 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 buddy. There are people out here who are left-handed. And I kind of am guilty of that. I always talk about low and left, but let me just tell you something. Whatever this book is saying, if you're left-handed, just do reverse. You don't read it in reverse. You just do it in reverse. What tends to happen most lefties is they shoot right, right, and left because of where the weapon is. So in reverse. So I will make sure that I put that in the little special little quotes that the book is good for left-handed or right-handed shooters. We just need to make sure that uh, you know the difference between your dominant hand and your non-dominant hand. Remember, dominant hand itself, uh, squeezing really hard with it, it's going to make the gun. I'm right-handed. It will push the gun off to the right. You left-handed students that are shooting to left, that's because you're over-gripping with your left hand. You need to grip harder with your right hand. You know, only 40% of your grip comes from your non-dominant hand, and the rest of it comes from your, uh, I mean, your non-dominant hand holds on to the pistol. And your dominant hand just grips the pistol. So, and then they obviously there's more information about the you the the video through our YouTube channel, uh, the YouTube. You know, if you look up John the Firearms Instructor, we're right there, guys. All right. <clears throat> Number one, gripping too tightly can cause your shots to mark off target. Sure, your grip is firm, but not too tight. Now, this is what I was telling you before. A lot of people get out there and grip really, really hard with their dominant hand, thinking their dominant hand is where all the power comes from. But your power comes from your non-dominant hand. You must over-squeeze with your non-dominant hand and under-squeeze with your dominant hand. If you do this, you are going to get a better, better control of the weapon. Next time you're at the range, I want you to hold your pistol in your hand. I want you to really squeeze really hard with your dominant hand and watch that pistol drift off to the right. It's just naturally going to do it if you're right-handed and vice versa. If you're left-handed, it's going to go off the left. And if you grip the gun with your non-dominant hand really tight, it's going to run off to that section as well. It's going to go off to the left. What you want to do is double squeeze with your left hand, single squeeze with your right hand, and then at that point in time, your weapon will stay center in the hand and make it very easy for you to control it. You know, over gripping with a firearm itself is normally a challenging thing for people. It's like trying to really, 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 the women do this a lot when they're trying to really muscle the gun lady there's no muscles in your hands so you're really not going to be able to over torque with your hands too much but what tends to happen they put a lot of pressure on the weapon and cause it to dip when the weapon fires you push you push or palm the gun 
palm the gun forward, which causes the dip in the front of the weapon. So gripping too tightly can cause your shots to be off target. Make sure your grip is firm, but not too tight. Now, obviously, guys, if I say something on this that you don't understand, you can always put it into the comments section. And after we get to about halfway through this thing, we will look at the comments and find out what what uh, what you guys are saying. And please don't hesitate to make make comments because you may be you might be really good at it, and someone else may be thinking it. If they're thinking it, you should be asking it. Because there's no stupid questions on anything we do. So keep that in mind. Let's go to the next one. You know, foundation of shooting, it all it's everything. It's not just one thing. And this is what always people always come in me and they say, Hey, 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 what's the one thing I could do to be the most accurate with a pistol? And I, I, I can't give them one thing. I gotta give them a this and that, this you know, pistol. You know, it's a grip, stance, trigger control, sight picture, sight alignment. It's the whole thing, right? They can't build half a foundation on a on a piece of property. They got to build the whole foundation on the piece of property. They don't start roof first. They start foundation first. And these are all the little things that need to be added. But one of the most things that will manipulate the pistol the most is what you're looking at right here is the trigger. Placing your finger too far in the trigger guard can affect your accuracy. Keeping it aligned with the frame of the gun is the best. Now, if you look at this trigger that he's doing here, this is what I would consider the tip of the finger. We can see, if you look inside this trigger well, where his crease is, and he is nowhere near that crease. What you're trying to do is push that trigger into the back of your hand as much as possible. The more you put your finger in the trigger, the more you're going to manipulate the gun either right or left. And that, that, is, that is a common, common mistake. We did a, two chapters in the ebook on just trigger, just trigger manipulation, because that is one of those things that causes a lot of... You can have proper grip. You can have proper stance. You can have proper sight alignment, proper sight picture. But if you're janking and panging and banging on that trigger, it ain't going to matter. That trigger is going to manipulate everything. So if there was one thing I would tell you to really work at is getting that smooth, crisp trigger pull, trigger engagement, trigger press, than anything else. Keep away from pulling the trigger. It's the slow cadence of the trigger coming back. We mentioned many times before about trigger travel, but a trigger has multiple stages. Some triggers have a really stiff cadence all the way back until the weapon cuts. Some triggers have no wall, no cadence. It comes all the way back to a wall, and then when that wall, past that wall, the weapon's going to fire. Some are going to go all the way back, all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way, and then get there and cut. They're all different. And I guess that would be the one thing that you would want to practice as much as possible on is getting this trigger manipulation almost to a muscle memory factor. If I put the weapon in your hand and you begin to gauge the trigger, that you knew how far it needs to go back before that weapon cuts or goes bang. Right. And if we understand that trigger travel to a point, we can set ourselves up when we put the weapon out in front of us to slowly engage the trigger until that weapon gets to a point where it's going to cut and fire. And that would be the ideal thing. So placing your trigger finger too far uh, uh, into the trigger guard can affect your accuracy. Keep it aligned with the frame of the gun. So, in other words, you're talking about do not. Make your finger stick out on the other side of that weapon. Now, we are live range, guys. You may hear gunshots in the background. You may have doors ringing and everything. People are coming in and going out. Uh, that's just part of uh, doing business in a retail store. Uh, at this point in time, that was the last person leaving. We shouldn't hear any more gunshots this evening. Uh, but if you do hear some, uh, it is not something crazy going on. We are an indoor gun range, again, indoor training facility. 
and we do have people here shooting once in a while. All right, so let's go ahead and go to number three. Okay, so here we go. The neglecting to use your supporting hand leads to instability, uh, making sure both hands can't control the recoil. Well, what you're looking at here, besides Jacob's black fingernails, now just kidding. Take this out his finger. <laughs> Uh, I just got a dirty look from Jacob. Uh, yeah, what you're looking at is how much control do you think her teacupping hand at the bottom, we call this teacupping when someone's got their hand down at the bottom. How much control do you think this, this person's going to have with this weapon when it goes bang? I mean, are, if your grip is in this stage right here, if you're gripping the gun this way, please contact me. Please. Uh, it is not helping your accuracy at all. Uh, you can imagine when I told you before, your power and strength comes from your non-dominant hand. How much power and strength is coming from this non-dominant hand? Uh, if you know somebody who is gauging the trigger like this, uh, next month when that book comes out, uh, proper uh, uh, your proper grip, mastering your grip, you want to send them a free copy or something like that. Buy it and send it to them. This will help them out tremendously. Uh, because the grip is is so much important. You can almost look at this and tell this person is going to have some crazy targets. They're not going to be where they want to be because they're going to have a lot of muzzle flip. You know, muzzle flip causes a lot of inaccuracies, but you know what else it could cause? It could cause jams. It can cause the gun to not operate properly. Remember that slide on top of that weapon is meant to go forward and backwards, forward and backwards. When you let the front of that post or let that front gun lift up, 17, watch it at this point in time, 17, guys. If you got that weapon floated up and are going up at an angle each time, that slide is not meant to go up at an angle. It's fighting gravity at that point in time, and there we could have some jam issues. And if you uh, have jams like that, you're not consistent with the firearm, which would not build your confidence very well at that point in time. So number three is neglecting to use your supporting hand can lead to instability. All right. Number four is holding the gun too high or too low can throw off your firearm. I think I've mentioned this to you before, but I want you to remember that a firearm is a bully. And it's going to take anything you give it. Now, this is Jacob's hand, and he would never hold a gun like this. But look at his teacup down there. Look at the gap between his finger and the trigger well there. See that little black spot right there? And look right here where his dominant hand has got that gapping area between him and his knuckle there. Well, that's not going to let that, that's not going to make that gun very stable for us, is it? And that's going to have a lot of muzzle flip that he could have uh, avoided if he would have reached up and grabbed the whole weapon in his hand, right? Put his his uh, web of his hand on the tang of that pistol, right? That upper top part there. And then brought his other thumb up there and got in the gun. We're looking, guys, we're looking to put as much meat around this pistol that as much as we can, in other words. So the concept, any skin that we're not, anything we're not covered, that's where the firearm wants to move or go to. So holding a gun too high or or low can throw your aim off. Now, thankfully, these are all pictures of a dummy gun that Mr. Jacob is standing there modeling for us. Uh, we try to catch people all the time in the back that are doing some kind of grip or problematic thing uh, that we could help them with. You can imagine how much muzzle flip this overall picture of this gun would have. Uh, it, would be, it would be very challenging to be accurate with this pistol uh, because he, he, uh, he's not controlling it and he's letting it do everything. One second, folks. Hey, Jacob. <clears throat> Hey, Jake, can you get me that 
drink over there, buddy. I'm about to. I'm parched. Sorry, guys. Just give me a second here. Yeah, maybe the lemonade or something. There we go. Good. All right. All right. Let's see if we can hear what this sounds like. Now, you would think that would be a beer, but it's not. It's a, it's a Diet Coke, right? It's a Diet Coke. So, uh, holding the gun too tight or too high, that's the key thing, man. You know, and we talked about before, um, manipulation of the pistol, doing all that stuff causes a little bit of inaccuracy. Let's hit the number five. Excuse me one second. I'll take a drink. All right, sorry about that. So I want you to think about, I want you to look at the pistol real quick. Does it look like it's level? Or does it look like the front post is a little lower than the back post? And that's what most people do. If you look at Jacob's hand, his, his dominant hand, pay attention to that. His wrist is at an angle, isn't it? And not keeping your wrist straight can result in poor control. This can affect your low and lefts. This can affect your lows. This can affect a lot of different stuff because your wrist is not aligned with your forearm. This is a perfect example of someone using their wrist to aim the gun versus their waist to aim the gun. And this is where most people don't see it. But as a firearms instructor standing behind a student, watching them engage the trigger they may not see it but they i can physically see it and i try to get them to understand what they're doing a lot of times for women what they end up doing is they start engaging the trigger and as they engage the trigger according to what kind of weapon it is it allows the front post to drop a little bit we don't want that post to drop as much as possible so keep in mind guys when you have a pistol in your hand, you want to make sure the pistol stays level as much as possible. So why we go back to that whole horizontal and vertical line we're looking for. Where's the horizontal line? That's between your two eyes, guys. That's between your two eyes. And that vertical line is over your dominant eye. And if you got that above the target, you want to bend with your waist to get the weapon there. Do not bend your wrist to get it there. Because the moment you bend your wrist to get it there, you're putting a gun at the uh, weird angle, and most likely you're going to anticipate the recoil and pull that bullet below the target, which you need for. No sense in aiming. Most of your targets you see at the ranges lately, I have them in the back. You've seen pictures of them plenty. They have a circle and an X. That circle and the X of most of the silhouettes is it mid guts? It's not mid chest. I want you to change out your targets to start looking, put your first target, bring the target into you, take a paper plate, three by five card, black magic marker, doesn't matter what it is, and put the circle where your eyes are and start your first 10 or 15 shots through your eyes. And then if you want to start using all the other rest of the targets, Make sure you use your waist to aim the gun, not your wrist. Keeping, the, keeping your wrist straight can result in poor control. We've all seen it. We've all done it. Even myself, guys. Uh, you know, I, you watch some of my YouTube videos. I'm not always the most accurate guy in the world when that first couple shots in the morning. I get warmed up. I'm pretty damn good. But in the real world, you know, we need to really work at it to keep us proficient with a pistol. And all these little things causes the inaccuracies. It's not one thing. Put them all together, you can be super accurate or you can be super out of control. But each one of them is different. Now, we haven't even talked about the thumb thing there, the cross thumbs, that, that grip that Jake's got there. How much control can Jacob give us with his non-dominant hand when he's thumbing the one th his non-dominant thumb over his dominant thumb you can see the gap right between the pistol and jacob's hand you can physically see that big gapping hole there if i were to take my finger and put it between the gun 
in Jacob's non-dominant hand, I would be able to take my finger, put it all the way down in between the gun and the pistol. How much control can that hand give Jacob if he's not touching the gun? And there we go again, not touching the gun. You're giving the gun places to move and places to go, and that's what it's going to take. What, what would make a better grip for this is Jacob taking his non-dominant hand and pushing his thumb underneath his dominant thumb. And we'll see that here probably in a little bit. But that proper grip starts with your right thumb over top of your left thumb if you're right-handed and opposite if you're left-handed. All right. <clears throat> here we go. And proper finger placement on the grip can affect. How many of you out there, be honest, we're not going to pick on you that much. How many of you you shoot a Glock and grab all the way up on the trigger well like Jacob's doing here? And a lot of people will wrap that finger up top there. Every time someone wraps their finger on a trigger well like that and you're giving yourself pressure, you're pulling that weapon to that side every time you engage the trigger. Jake, Jacob's got his hand so wrapped up on that gun, he couldn't get his finger in that tr trigger well if he wanted to. Excuse me, I apologize about that. that. That was a Coke burp. I apologize on national on national live. I apologize. <clears throat> Using the proper finger placement on the grip can affect trigger pull. Make sure your fingers are pointed in a position correctly. You know the whole idea about the uh, combat grip with the two fingers forward is indexing with the weapon as best you can. Indexing. The target with your finger. Jacob's got his finger way up there on the gun. That other hand should be down on his other three fingers down there, underneath the trigger well, not on top of the gun. And when he's grabbing the trigger well like that, that hand is going to manipulate the pistol to the left almost every time. The other guys out there who shoot like that, I'm not saying it's wrong, uh, but it's wrong. So uh, you want a better control over it. That's the easiest thing to do. A lot of people say, well, why is it flat? Glock put that on there for a reason. And I'm sure they did, but it's not the best way to grab a pistol. Because if you kind of think about this, if we're using our fingers, right? And I want you to put your hands out in front of you real quick. And I want you to make a proper grip. And if I'm taking my finger and I'm closing up my right hand, it, there's only three fingers there. But if I close my left hand, there's four fingers there. And if you don't have that, what is that, that uh, index finger wrapped around the trigger well, like you shoot, drag around the trigger well like that, versus grabbing around the pistol, you're losing the most powerful finger you have. And it's not being, it's not being used where it needs to be. And we need to control this weapon. So when you have the fingers touching each other, you know, uh, it makes it a lot easier for you to control the weapon. So using improper finger placement on the grip can affect your trigger pull and how the weapon is manipulated. All right. Allowing the thumbs. Here we go. There was the one I was telling you that. Uh, allowing the thumbs to interfere with the slide can cause a malfunction. Now, Jacob doesn't have his hands all the way up on the slide, but what tends to happen is a lot of people put pressure on the slide with their thumbs. And it's called thumbing is what people do. And when you thumb it, not only you cause a manipulation to the slide, but you can slow it down. You can you can cause it to not go to slide lock. It could It could cause the magazine to fall out if you get too much thumb pressure. I've seen it all, uh, but a lot of times what tends to happen is no matter how great of a shot person is, a person shoots, if they're using their thumb for pressure or pressuring the weapon, you're pushing it off to that side. You're thumbing it off to the right or the left or whichever way you're doing it. So we want to keep those thumb as neutral as possible. Remember, our trigger finger and our thumbs are along for the ride. You don't apply pressure with these. 
because those can manipulate the pistol. And we don't want to do that. Allowing your thumbs to interfere the slide can cause malfunctions and keep your thumbs clear of all moving parts. That's just like taking that thumb, guys, and you've seen it. I've got plenty of Band-Aid boxes in the back to prove it. When someone takes a slide or takes their thumb and rolls it behind the slide. And the unique thing about that is people can do that and get away with it. Because you have your thumb down further on the slide on your on your non-dominant hand's wrist, you can get away with it a couple times. And then all of a sudden you change the angle of the weapon or you change the, your height of your thumb and now the slide comes back and bites you. We all have those marks on our hands from not controlling the weapon. I have a big bump on my thumb, which I hold a Glock very high and I tend to get bit by a Glock. That's why I tend to not like them. I don't hold them wrong. It's just I hold them as tight as I can and I tie them the tang. And unlike a Smith & Wesson where it doesn't have that big overbite, uh, the Glock does, and it tends to bite me after a while. That's why I kind of like stay away from the 19s and the 43s. The 40, I don't have the problem with the 43s or the 48s. It's normally the double side, the double stack guns like the 19 and the 17s is when I get myself in trouble with those. Uh, so allowing your thumbs to interfere, the slide can cause malfunctions. That's tip number seven. All right, failing to maintain consistent grip. Now, this is something that happens tremendously for a lot of people, and I wanted Jacob to show you if that non-dominant hand is not touching the pistol, it's not controlling the pistol. And there's a lot of things people do. Uh, this could be the thumb inside there not touching it. Like, you, you, like Jacob just showed you a little bit ago, if we go back and look at this picture we just did, this one here. It, that thumb could physically that that you could get a gap in the back side of that and not even be touching the gun at all like this that's actually the thumb inside there uh there's one way you could do that there's a couple different ways but a lot of times what people will do and and not picking on the ladies again but a lot of the ladies will call it, will milk a firearm which in other words they'll double they'll grip it shoot it Adjust the grip, shoot it, adjust the grip, shoot it, adjust the grip, shoot it. And they're just changing the grip angles every time they do it. And it's causing a lot more, a lot more. They're doing a lot of manipulation of the firearm or milking the firearm. And it's causing to have non consistent and consistent uh, grip angles, which causes a lot of this different stuff. Get your hands on the weapon properly, thumbs forward. Decent grip. You don't need a real heavy, I don't want to drop it kind of deal, but you need enough that you feel in control. That's the one thing that I would tell most of my students, whether it's men or women. Did you feel in control of the weapon or did the weapon seem like it was sliding and slipping and you were afraid you were going to drop it? And a lot of them tend to get to that mid-level. They didn't feel like they were going to drop it, but they surely didn't think they had control of it. And we need to get more into that control side than we do more in the non-control side. And that's for obvious reasons. So, you know, you know, having control of the weapon makes the weapon safe. Having control of the weapon makes you more accurate. Big control of the weapon uh, gives you the consistency, the quick acquisition, everything else like when you're having to reach up and grab a hold of it each time because of the muzzle uh, flip or the muzzle ma manipulation, there becomes our challenge more than anything else. So failing to, failing to maintain a consistent grip. And a lot of times, ladies, it, it, it is more in the back muscles than it is in the hands. And gentlemen, it's more in the chest muscles than it is in the hands. So those are the things we got to get our head. Remember, men. We control the weapon with our pecs, you know, our, our feet shoulder width apart, driving the weapon out and pushing the gun forward. With a woman, it's more about your back muscles. That means driving your dominant hand out, pulling your non-dominant hand back, and getting your back muscles to lock in to control the weapon. You'll be extremely surprised how accurate and in control you are 
when you're driving these weapons or controlling these weapons. You know, there's consistency going on there and a little bit of confidence. Once you get the confidence in the weapon, uh, it becomes so much easier. Because remember, no matter what we talk about here today, if you don't get anything, I want you to get the whole factor as a firearm is just a tool. A tool needs a craftsman, and that's what you need to be become. Is don't think that the weapon is doing anything without you. It can't load its own magazine. It can't rack its own side. It can't pull its own trigger. You maintain control of this weapon. The weapon doesn't control you. Now, in the beginning, most people, the weapon does control you because a lot of people have the misconception that a firearm is a deadly weapon. A firearm is not a deadly weapon. It's just a tool, and a tool needs a craftsman. And that's what we're asking you to become. Become a craftsman of what you do. You know, you have a job you do every day. Uh, whether you, you you like barbecuing or whatever it is, you got to know it the best you can. You cannot have any kind of uh, intimidation by anything. I get the whole point about respecting a firearm and all that stuff like that, but don't even think it's a deadly weapon because it can't do anything without you. You control it. It doesn't control you. So failing to maintain a consistent grip can lead to inc inconsistent shots. Practice keeping a steady grip every time. That's where the five rounds at a time comes in, guys. How many people go out to the range and take a full magazine and dump it? Boom, 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 boom. You know what? In that in that 15 round masterpiece of pulling off shots, how many bullets you think hit exactly where that guy's aiming at? Probably not too many of them, right? first five, you could be accurate. After that, you're along for the ride until the weapon is empty. We want to make sure every round we shoot counts. We want to be that consistent with a firearm. Because in real life terms, we have to be. Because in the life and death situation, we can't be thinking about all this stuff. You can't call tag or you can't call freeze. You can't go... You know, hold off for a second. Let me remember what John told me on the live two weeks ago. You need to have muscle memory in this whole product, and it's got to be right where you need it to be. That's why shooting once every six months is not a great idea. That's why getting your butt here at the range and shoot on a, on a weekly basis because this is part of your job. This is part of what you need to do to protect you and your loved ones. It's not the cop's job to protect you. It's your job to protect yourself. Cop's job, I told you many times before, he's there to write the report and draw the chalk line. Make sure that chalk line isn't yours, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's go to number nine. Uh, okay, I don't know why I didn't change that picture. Um, you know what ends up happening a lot of times in number nine? I didn't change a picture. I don't know why I didn't do that. I was at the gun show this weekend. I had plenty of time to do nothing. Yeah, right. Um, basically, ignoring proper techniques can lead to discomfort. Well, you know what it, it does? It leads leads to a lot of different stuff. It, lies, it leads to discomfort. It leads to fatigue. It leads for uh, ante anticipation. It makes you a little bit more nervous and scared of the firearm because you don't feel like you're in 100% control, control of the weapon. A lot of times when you ask somebody that question in regards to how did those five shots feel, it seemed to me that those shots were one was good, two was okay, three was getting a little sloopy, four was you were almost out of control, and five, you grabbed a hold of it again and controlled it the last minute. Now, a consistent grip will make all the difference in the world here. And we got to get that consistency. You almost got to feel it more than you can see it, if that makes sense. Because a proper grip will feel like the shot just did exactly what it needed to do. A nine millimeter, guys, has very little recoil. If you control it, if you do not control the weapon, a nine millimeter could be an aggressive round. An aggressive round that you need to be able to be shocked over. Most most women come here 
with a misconception that it's going to knock them on their ass. And when I let them shoot the first time, tell them about the driving and all that stuff, and they kind of look at me and go, oh, and I've got, you know, I'm, I'm behind them, and I'm saying, hey, that's the biggest recoil of the day right there, honey. That's it. Now let's work this pistol until we know we can control it and watch them grow from magazine to magazine to magazine is a true passion of mine. We take a person who never shot a pistol before, which is, be honest with you, it's the easiest student to train. If they're not deathly afraid of the weapon and they want to do this and they're here to learn, man, it's, you just, it's just amazing how quickly a student can grow. They always, people always ask, well, how many classes do you think it's going to take me to learn to shoot a pistol? I say one, one to get you comfortable, two to make you start doing an irregular bit, and three, just get yourself into it. But the first pistol, the first training class, by about the third magazine, you're loading, you're unloading, you're racking, you're holding, you're gripping, you're stancing, and you're doing everything yourself. And all I'm there is just motivating you. We started this thing many years ago for three reasons. motivate educate, and entertain. And I hope we're doing all those for you guys. Because in the real life form, you look at the economy we're living in, you look at the world we're living in, we're going to need these sooner or later. We're going to need them, and we got to be the boss of them, not them be the boss of us. So uh, ignoring proper grip or technique, and most people, when they say about ignoring proper grip, it's not that they're ignoring proper grip, it's they don't know. You know, it's amazing in Florida that you can, can't can buy a motorcycle or drive a motorcycle in the state of Florida as a Florida resident without taking a full class. You've got to go two weekends in a row. You've got to go through all your testing. You've got to drive the motorcycle on the street. They're more concerned about motorcycle drivers than they are about people owning a firearm. You don't need to take a test for a firearm. You don't need to take a class for a firearm. You can come into the gun store, buy a gun, and walk out with it if you had your concealed. If not, you got three days, but no one's requiring you to take any kind of proficiencies. Even in the concealed carry classes, guys, proficiency is two shots. That's not the greatest, funnest class we do here. We do most of our concealed carry classes, our combo classes, where they spend an hour at the range. And then we give them an online part of the class to watch at home, and but we're giving them more time behind the gun, which is what most people need. You know, we, every time we do a concealed carry class in, in, in here, every Wednesday night we do concealed, you know, probably 50%, 60%, maybe 70% of the students that are in these classes have never shot a gun or haven't shot a gun in three and a half to four years. But now they want to get their concealed. So in us, we're always trying to sell training classes more than we are the concealed carry. But obviously, um, we do offer the concealed as well. So, you know, confidence is a big deal when you get down to it. So ignoring proper techniques can lead to discomfort, can lead to fatigue. I'll tell you what, ladies, you start driving with your back muscles with a firearm and you haven't been using those back muscles for a while. When you're doing it right, you start making this whole back muscle movement that can tell. And gentlemen, you know, when you're running the gun like that and not controlling it, your hands get really fatigued after a while because you're trying to control all the recoil through your hands, which you have no real muscles. They have ligaments and tendons, but there's no muscles. And then you're trying to muscle that gun to a point where you just, you know, you go to the gym, you start using your muscles. After a while, they get fatigued. And this is the same thing that happens to a person shooting a pistol. So that's why when you come to the range, you shoot 300 rounds. You should have stopped at the first 50. Only people winning on that is the gun store who's selling you more ammo. And, uh, you know. And and time. They see you buying range time and you're doing all that stuff like that, but that's not making you more efficient. You're you know, the whole idea of shooting a pistol is to build confidence. And if you're forty percent accurate 
after 200 rounds, all that 40% accuracy, that's the stuff you learn, not the first five or 10 rounds that you were proficient with. You know, so keep that on. And we, you know, we talk about proficiency. We're not talking about a three-inch circle. I'm talking about an eight-inch paper plate. Most people come to the range, shoot low and to the left, or shoot low if you're right-handed. If you're left-handed, you shoot low and to the right. And you're looking at the pistol trying to figure out why the pistol is shooting low and low and left or low and right. Trust me, it ain't the pistol. It's you engaging the trigger, slapping the trigger, pulling the trigger, or doing anything else that's going to manipulate the pistol in the point where it needs it. A level pistol shoots level. Period. Period. Those sights on those guns are there for convenience. We did a class two Saturdays ago. It was a tactical class. We had five students and six students in there. Six? My wife was there. Plus five. Yeah, so it was six six students. We were doing draw from the holster. We were Miss Johnson did pretty well, actually. I was very proud of her. We were doing uh, draw from the holster. We were doing a lot. But what we did in that class is we were doing a lot of point shooting. Now, if you haven't done this, this is something you need to practice. We were taking the the eight inch paper plate, putting it out at three yards, which is nine feet, but in our box, it's about 10. And putting five shots down the range in the paper plate without using your sights. You're looking at the back of the gun, keeping the gun level, put the five shots in. If the student passed that, they pushed it out another five. And then we got to Miss Johnson went out all the way out to 30, 33 using her sights. Her group got wide, but she did well. Uh, but most everybody in the class uh, got out to about 21, 24, so uh, seven, eight, nine yards they got out to before they actually had to, any kind of missing the paper plate, which was pretty impressive. Because if you think about looking down at your chest, uh, vital triangles, eight and a half by 11, maybe, or, or the vital triangle works at your shoulders and goes to your groin. And the paper plate is eight inches. So we used a lot of the six inch paper plates and everyone was doing that well. So if you use six, eights, eight inch, eight, eight, and, eight and a half by 11, three by five cards, those are all great options for you for target basis. All right. Uh, 18, 18, looking at this, 18. Uh, number 10 is overlooking the importance of grip strength impacting your shooting ability. Working on a Building the maintenance of your grip strength for better control. Now, this can be done a lot of different ways. We talked, I, I deal with a lot of women seniors, and they are in different time frames of their life. Some are married and have a husband, and they both want to come shoot, but she doesn't want him teaching her, which makes perfect sense to me. That we have um, that are widowed. There's guns in the home. There's always been a gun in the home. She's never had any kind of experience with it. And she's now by herself. And she wants to get something. And there are women who have never, ever, 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 ever thought they'd touch a gun ever. And now all of a sudden with all the stuff in the world going today. Whether their husband likes it or not, they're going to learn to shoot a pistol and become more proficient. And those are the things that we kind of work on a regular basis. So it's a lot of different stuff. So I tell the ladies all the time, we need to work on our strength as best we can. Because, you know, just, just the endurance of shooting 50 rounds on some of the seniors. When we're talking seniors, I'm talking high 65 all the way to 80 then we do a lot of different women like that but they're not going to be the range for three hours they're coming in for the purpose of getting this 50 rounds done and getting comfortable and being able to rack the slide load the magazine and all the stuff like that now there are plenty of guns on the market nowadays for these senior women or senior men that are easier to rack and easier to load but they still need to work on their hand strength so we talk about there's a couple of different things you can do. You can get the balls that give you the, the like, just take a tennis ball and squeeze it once in a while. Just squeeze that pencil, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. 
you'd be surprised just getting out and walking on a regular basis, walking around the block, walk the dog, do what you need to do there. You know, just holding the pistol out in front of you, doing the, taking a water bottle, two water bottles and put them in your hands and just put your arms down to your side and lift them up in front of you and hold them there for three to four, maybe five count, six count, seven count, and bring them back down to you and bring them up in front of you. Doing all that stuff like that, you'll be working muscles you've never worked before or you haven't worked in 20 years. Because a lot of times what happens to the ladies, they'll get to three, maybe four magazines and they want to quit. And I have to draw them down a little bit further. Give me, give me two more magazines. Give me three more magazines. And then after a week or two weeks of doing that, three weeks of doing that, now they're back there shooting 100 rounds and no problem. But we got to make sure that like anything else, any activity we do, we need to practice it on a regular basis and maintain a good grip and a good stance, a good trigger control and good sight picture and get it all done. You know, the most diminishing sport you can do is the one you don't do. And that, that seems silly, but think about that. You know, if you're riding a bicycle or roller skates or anything else if you do that once a year how proficient are you going to be in you're not going to be proficient in it you know that's the same thing with shooting you can't come here buy a gun take it home put it in the drawer and go i only going to use this or i'm only going to carry it or i'm only going to do this when i think i need it now what are you clairvoyant when are you going to think you're going to need it you're not you're not going to know when you need it till you need it and then at that point in time, you may not be at home where it is. You may be somewhere else when you need it. So remember, when you get into a high-stress situation, everything slows down, muscle memory goes away, you fall back to your weakest training. My question to you is, when's the last time you shot a pistol? When's the last time you took a training class? How proficient with you were you? And do you think you'd be able to do it in a high-stress situation? If you answered yes to all those, or you, you feel comfortable, then congratulations, but most people don't. Most people don't. They need time behind the gun to get comfortable. Understanding everything is important. All right, number 10 there. All right, in the conclusion, 10 pistol grip mistakes you might be making. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced shooter, it's important to ensure you have that you are using proper grip to maximize your accuracy and control. From improper finger placement to gripping the tight too tightly, these mistakes can significantly impact on shooting performance. By identifying and correcting these errors, you can improve your shooting skills and overall proficiency with a with a firearm. You know what else? When you start hitting the accuracy, when you start becoming proficient with a pistol, the smiles start coming up too, and you start having fun coming to the range. You know. Be honest with yourself, guys. Last 10 meter range, you shot 150 rounds. What was your, let's say we got one point for every 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 bullet that impacted where you wanted it. Would you think you'd be over 100? Would you be at 80? Would you be at 70? Would you be at 60? That's what you need to think about. You know, taking a proper class, finding the right instructor, getting in some kind of the training class. Those guys, us instructors, work off a lot of different stuff that will help you build your performance and make you a better shooter all all around whether it comes from proper grip and proper stance and proper trigger curl and proper side alignment you know those are things that you need to get to so how do you find the proper instructor well you kind of talking to one right now but some of you may not be able to get to me so i want to make sure you understand how to find somebody like me which should be rare, but they're out there, guys. There are guys as good or better than me, to be honest with you. I've been doing this since 2013, 2012. I got my NRA instructor's license, and I probably trained five, 600 students a year. And I've consistently done that over the last multiple, multiple years. And I, we've done concealed carry classes. Uh, we took over this indoor range in 2019. And I'm very fortunate to have a lot of great students out there, a lot of great members who send people to us on a regular basis. 
Uh, but if you can't find a good instructor in your area, first thing I would start with is any of the indoor ranges in your area. Any of the indoor range or outdoor ranges, obviously, uh, will have instructors that may be qualified or be able to work with them. Uh, if you can't find that, you can always contact the NRA because, you know, I'm an NRA and certified instructor. And I am a USCCA instructor as well, as well as my wife and Jacob and Johnny are all USCCA. And you could go to their website, put in your zip code, and you will find a qualified instructor that, that does the uh, concealed carry and the firearms training from the USCCA. And so Gary Associate, same thing with the NRA. And then what I once you found out their names, look at their credentials, go to the websites, maybe look at the reviews. Uh, we are very fortunate. We we we've been doing this a long time. We have over 400 five-star Google reviews on our firearms training. And uh, you know, not including the Facebook, Instagram, and all that stuff that has over 250 there too. And that will help you tremendously. And then talk to them on the phone. You know, they seem like you guys are clicking. Well, that's where you need to go. If you are new to this, brand new to this, and they're talking way over your head or they don't specialize in new students, maybe something you want to back away from, right? Do not sign up for any kind of tactical class. And they shouldn't let you sign up for any tactical class. Until you have the basics, right? There's people all in that tactical class two weeks ago have taken at least two classes with us prior to taking one of those classes. Because when you start moving with a firearm, you're going to drop your accuracy about 50%. If you came to the class with about 40% accuracy, and now all of a sudden you're moving, what kind of accuracy are you going to have with the firearm? So get yourself trained, get yourself getting comfortable, spend more time behind the gun, and, and find the right place to go and shoot. That, that's, that's my opinion and suggestion. All right, so let's finish this up by going to the comments tonight and see what we have as far as comments go. Um, again, uh, we have that uh, our book is going to be on sale for you guys. I'm giving you a $5 discount. If you order the ebook through our Shopify store, which will be in the link, you'll receive $5. It's one time use. So you can't go up and buy it again. You have to use another laptop or something else. But you get the book, you download it. It's, uh, it, it is something that you can read. It's about 22 to 23 pages. It's got some pictures in it as well. The cool thing about this, this uh, book that we have, there is a playlist attached to it that helps with long videos that will help you understand why you're shooting low and left. And if you're left-handed, why you're shooting low and right. And it gives you our full playlist attached to it as well. So you can go to our YouTube channel and watch those and become more proficient with the pistol and become more accurate and be more uh build that confidence that we're looking for 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 becoming a better shooter so let's go over the comments real quick i'm gonna take a drink now at the end of the month uh probably it probably by the end of the month that book the new book's going to be coming out and that's going to be talking about uh get a grip that's what it's all about it's a master, uh, master your aim, and it's uh, finding that right proper grip for you, and that's going to be out. And I'll I'll post that here in a little while, uh, once we get it up and finished up and get it posted to all the locations. So let's go to comments. All right, hello Jim from Vermont. How you doing, buddy? Hope you're doing wonderful. How's your wife? Uh, she's wonderful, Danny. I'm glad you're here, buddy. Uh, Danny, Danny's one of our members here at the shop. He's a hero to me. He comes in every week and sweeps up, makes it makes it sweet and nice in here. He cleans up pretty well. Um, he's uh, he's an he's an awesome 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 member. Uh, turning in from Minnesota, Cliff Harrington. Hey, Cliff, how are you, buddy? Are you new? Uh, have you been on before? All right, Chris, how you doing? 
Let's see. Let's see what Chris has to say. Uh, oh, good luck with the books. My question is, who do you think should be cast it as the movie <laughs> adaption of the book? LOL. Mm, uh, the, Chris is asking who's going to be the uh, who's going to be John Johnson, the instructor. Well, you know, I could probably tell you that. Um, um, I think I'm going to do it myself. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it myself. Or you know what? I'll have Jack Black do it. How about that? I like, kind of dig Jack Black. That's pretty good. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Chris. All right. Richard Shepard, thank you very much for being here, buddy. Jim just mentioned he's great. Thank you for the awesome video today. Very informative. Thank you, John. Glad you're here, buddy. That uh, lasagna was great, buddy. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Oh, Natasha. There's Natasha. I was going to, where the heck's Natasha? I didn't see you. Now, I did put the link in the comments up here, but obviously, uh, hang on. It's on here. There I am. There I am. See my alligator shirt? Miss Johnson got that from me, for me. That's my alligator shirt. Matches my Smith & Wesson hat. My alligator shirt, my Smith & Wesson hat. Uh, so. <clears throat> oh. <laughs> Jack Black. Good work, LOL. Yeah. That of the rock. You know, some people tell me I look like the rock. Or they, well, I look like a rock. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we've been, you know what, the gun show weekend, we did pretty well. We moved 14 units, as well as we sold probably 20 training classes, you know, which is kind of a cool, we do those gun shows for our advertisement purposes. And if you sell something, that's a little extra bonus on, on top of it. And this is the season right before the, everyone goes home. You know, one of the things of Florida is, Past Easter, if I go to a steak restaurant and I see an Ohio car out there, I go straight to the person who's the most sunburned in the place here because they're the ones they're the ones that suit me here because it's after Easter they got to go, <laughs> so we can go to restaurants and eat and everything else like that. Because after Easter, man, uh, your 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 time is time is done. Those winter residents are so wonderful because they bring so much business to us. Um, but a traffic count and all that stuff like that. But after that, we get kind of tired of the whole, uh, um, you know, having to wait three hours to go to dinner and everything. Well, you're smart. You don't go. Um, okay. Cliff Harrington. I've been following your YouTube channel for two years now. Enjoying the taco nights. Yeah, that's Tuesday taco, buddy. Uh, yeah, that's Tuesday taco. You ain't kidding, kid. Uh, wait, actually, I cooked up some, uh, got home last night, and there was some meat there, and, the, and my son has a hankering for taco seasoning. That's what his favorite. He's a little boring while he eats. He's, he's, he was, he was picky like me, but he's got a little bit of a an irritable bowel thing that he works with. Some, some stuff works really great for him. Some stuff doesn't, but he eats taco seasoning like it's going out of style. And I cooked up some taco meat last night, so not sure if it's going to be Taco Tuesday tonight, but we'll see. We'll see when we get home. Miss Johnson will have something good cooked for us. That's who's not on the call tonight, Miss Johnson. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Where the heck she at? Nope. She didn't ring in. She might not have said nothing. Might not have said nothing. Well, I hope you guys have a great week. I hope you made it through that... Uh, the eclipse, boy, people were losing their brain over that, weren't they? I mean, it was amazing that uh, people even can walk and talk and do all that stuff the way they were acting about that yesterday or the day before. It reminded me of the old Y2K day, days. I said that I said that the other day at one of my classes, and the two girls up front looked at me like crickets. They had no idea what I was talking about. That just puts how old we are. I was only that wasn't too long ago. Y2K, you know. Uh, I remember going to a party that night, Y2K. My brother-in-law was staying, stay, my, my brother-in-law's 
my brother-in-law's brother's wife, mother's house. <laughs> we were at her house, and we were doing a, for a New Year's Eve party, and uh, Y2K was going down, and I had had like four or five beers, and, and the kids were little, and my wife was there. I, we got to about, you know, 11... 58 or 11 57 and i went outside and by the air condition here in florida we all have a cutoff switch on the, on the house and we got to and they started counting five four three two one and i shut the lights off on the whole house i shut it down and the whole night i've been telling everybody man i don't know what's going to happen at two and the 2000s, you know, they talk about the computers are going to go, the lights are going to go, malfunctions, everything. And I've been loading everybody up all night about that. They were like, ah, oh, shit, that ain't going to happen. And you should have heard that house. That There was nothing but screaming going on. <laughs> nothing but screaming going on. Um, man, my wife come around the corner. She was so mad. She was like, did you do that? I don't know what you're talking about. So I was outside. I flipped it back on after a little bit. And that it all happened. But I. That was, uh-oh, she's on. You're on your own tonight, LOL, she says. <laughs> Those are no tacos tonight, guys. No tacos tonight. Yeah, but that Y2K party was fun, and that, that was a, a experience of the night there. So I am so fortunate to have you guys in my life. Thank you very much. Besides my true family, you are a family to me, and I, I appreciate each and every one of you very much. So uh, you have an opportunity. Uh, to support us in any way possible by making sure you like and subscribe and and and, uh, and hit that bell icon every time we upload a video. If you guys are on, uh, on Facebook or YouTube or Instagram, follow us on all those channels. That would be awesome. Uh, take advantage of the live 2024. Pick up that book for us. That will help us tremendously too. You're getting the, you're getting the uh, first ebook. Um, for two reasons, I want to do it because you guys have trusted and followed me and I wanted to discount it for you. And number two, I'm looking for some reviews that I can use for any of my other advertisement. You can just read the book for me. Let me know how it goes. And, uh, you can send back those reviews. It'd be awesome. And that'll help us tremendously build on our e, um, book experience as well. We're doing all this stuff for you guys. Um, like I said before, we opened this up many years ago for for three reasons. It was for entertainment purposes. It was for education and motivation. And I hope we do that for you, man, because at the end of it, uh, the whole reason why we do any of this stuff is because of you. Until next time, guys, God bless. Be safe. And remember. You are your first line of defense. Until we meet again, we'll see you, folks.